Well, because the biblical writers were concerned with religious truth, the history they wrote was not history as we know it today. It was the story of God's loving presence in the world. The church claims that the Bible is the word of God in human words. If we are to honour the Bible as God's word, then we have to take seriously the implication of its human quality. God speaks to us in the images and idioms of particular people in particular cultures at particular times. For example, yeah, nah, it's been mental, back in the day, whatever. The biblical writers expressed particular insights about God, about God's mysterious presence and grace, about God's self-revelation. There was no divine dictation involved. Their knowledge was limited, which means that there are errors in dating, in mapping, and in other historical facts. And any Google search reveals many such errors. Therefore, we have to respect the historical and the literary context out of which every event and saying and passage in the Old Testament comes. So, we have to ask about what the original author intended before imposing our own meaning. We cannot ignore the human dimension of God's word. Now, the story of Noah and the ark in Genesis chapter 6 to 9 provides an excellent example of what happens when we ignore this human dimension of God's word. Some interpreters ignore the literary character of the story and mistakenly treat it as a factual description of a real event. They fail to see that it is similar to the accounts of world-destroying floods that are part of the traditions of many cultures. It resembles in particular the famous Gilgamesh epic, a Mesopotamian flood story. Any legend is seriously misinterpreted when we treat it as a factual account because we fail to see the truth it teaches. And what is the truth of the flood story? What do you think is the truth necessary for our salvation in that story? Now a careful reading of it, including its inconsistencies, since two accounts are blended together in chapters 6 to 9, reveals that it tells very vividly a profound religious truth. That is, the God who takes account of evil is also a God of mercy. God knows the weakness and sinfulness of the human creature, but promises in a covenant never to flood the earth again. Now the rainbow is the sign of this promise made to all. The story of the flood is not factual, but it is nonetheless true. Its religious message of God's compassionate love and mercy is at the heart of our faith.